Hello, my sweet, dear, beautiful gamer friends. <laughs> Welcome to GS Live with GameSpot, GameSpot Live. I'm your host, Curtin Davina. Uh, it is Summer Game Fest 2024, and that means cool games with cool people like me. And Lucy James, who's a host that's joining me, but more importantly, we have a special guest. It's Petter. That's me. For, uh, and we are here, you're here, with Steam, uh, you, you may not believe it, <laughs> but <laughs> Steam World Heist 2. Uh, you're, you're quite literally wearing it, so here you are. Oh, yeah. I am, for sure, yeah. Uh, how are you doing? I'm just doing great. I've uh, been showing our game for uh, a bunch of people this morning, and it's been lovely. Uh, really liking the uh, reception we've had so far. Yeah, that's great. So, I mean, like, uh, how long have you been working on it? You know, what's it like to finally have it in people's hands here at Summer Game Fest? Um, so, like, this, the, just the project in itself has been going on for uh, maybe four years or so. Uh, it's been slightly less than that in actual production, uh, but it's really nice to be able to show it off to people now. It's been one of the, the games that people have been asking for uh, from us. And uh, historically, with uh, SteamWorld, we've been kind of all over the place. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice to be able to get back to one of our most loved uh, titles. Well, yeah, that's the thing. SteamWorld Heist 1 came out in 2006. Yeah, it's like nine years ago now. Yeah. Uh, and it's always like, it's it's like inter it, it was interesting for me because I've always known of like Steam Dig and like SteamWorld yeah. Heist. And it's like, it's like there's like a universe of Steam games. Uh, not to be confused with the... The, the play, distribution which, platform. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, it's, it's, this is also the first time um, that it's being done. It was the first one was published by Thunderful Games. Maybe, um, maybe not. Maybe no, like not. Uh, Steamworld Build uh, is also published by Thunderful, uh, yeah. and that would came out just last year. Yeah. As well. But now this is like a full fledged, developed, published Thunderful. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. could say that. Yeah. 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 How is it? What is it like being able to uh, kind of like expand this unit? Like it's like it's like it's like feels like it has this like very cult sort of thing. Like you said, people have been asking for it. I think I think a common theme among the the Steamworld games that we've made is that we like we take it in directions where we really want to go ourselves. Uh, that's been a big portion of why we've jumped between different genres and uh, trying out different things. And uh, sometimes we also have a bunch of things we want to do with a game we already released, like in Steamwell Heist, for example. Uh, so there were a bunch of things that we wanted to do with the first game that we now actually managed to put into Steamwell Heist 2. Mm. Uh, for example, like we just, yeah, really in this game we have a this huge cool world map where you get to explore the ocean and uh, sail around and uh, do some naval fighting, uh, and that's something we actually started doing for Heist One as well, uh, but didn't get the time to finish. So, mm. uh, where do you start? Because I mean, looking at even the Steam page for the first game, overwhelmingly positive. Ten yeah. out of ten, people absolutely love it. Where do you decide to, you know, from what you and the team want to implement into a sequel versus taking things from? an audience that's very engaged and that loves the original game. Like, where do you even start? Like, you wanted to do the map and couldn't, but then other things that you've added in this game, where do they come from? Um, I think, again, like a big portion of it is just the passion of the development team themselves, mm -hmm. of uh, us being able to show things that we love and, and get them to new people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, like, I would say that all of the SteamWorld games are very approachable. Mm -hmm. And even though maybe you loved, say, one of our games in one of the genres, and now we make another game in a different genre, so, like, is this for you then? Like, oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't try this. This isn't the type of game I like, but, you know, I like SteamWorld, so I'll give it a try. And uh, then we, like, we try to tailor the experience in such a way that it's still easy for you to get into and maybe find a new genre uh, to like that mm -hmm. you didn't know before. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, I mean, obviously, we are gamers as well, so we want to still give you like depth and uh, uh, like a strategic challenge uh, mm. with what we're doing. So, and I think Steam with Heist is probably the game where we go the furthest in trying to give you a lot of tools to work with and try to challenge you to put those to good use. Well, there's like, um, and that's where I find like the Steam universe where like each game has like its own genre in a way, like mm. its own distinct thing, but it's still within like, this, these, this like steam punk. Yeah, yeah. This, this it, well, like thing. we have our DNA of like a very specific sense of humor yes, and yeah. the characters and like the art design as well. Like I, our artists are just amazing and making these these uh, you know quirky robots look so good. Uh, the one thing that uh, uh, watching gameplay here, it's like. Uh, 2D turn-based combat, like this, like you know, this kind of strategy sort of way of like fighting uh, and like these other enemies, yep. um, and it's in, in on its own uh, has like its own uh, thing tropes that come with strategy 
games. But the thing that makes, <clears throat> excuse me, but the, uh, this has this whole like you bounce bullets and like yep. all these things. Teaching, teaching people geometry bad in schools. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and there's like this, uh, there's such a cool, fun skill and puzzle element. Mm -hmm. Like this combination of being like, you can do a sick, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. plan a shot and like see it pull off in like a single thing. Like, oh my God, I'm so cool. But you know, then there's like that, I don't know, it's the balance of the both. Mm -hmm. right? For sure, I mean, yeah. it, it's definitely the DNA of the first game that people mm -hmm. loved a lot and, and I, I'm honestly surprised that we haven't seen it more in other games mm -hmm. since then. And mm -hmm. Again, like it's been nine years and uh, that's uh, like a big portion of going back to this game mm -hmm. as well. Uh, it's just so fun. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about like worms as a uh, like yeah, thing. Worms, yeah. yeah, I was a big worms fan yeah. when I was younger. So like seeing like like SteamWorld Heist like feels like a, like when you say like, oh, I'm surprised somebody hasn't done it, but it's like SteamWorld Heist has felt like a natural evolution in a way, mm -hmm. like that sort of genre and style. Mm -hmm. Now you're taking it to the sea, to the, to the water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, talk it's about nice. it. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? Like, it's like you're now, you're, it's like, how does that gameplay differ um, in what you're doing? What so, you're like, the first game is very much, you know, it, it still has a piratey theme of, <laughs> you know, you're, you're trying to crash into other spaceships in that kind and, uh, and kind of, you know, go in there, get the loot, get out. Uh, and uh, it, it kind of felt natural, I think, to, to go more towards the root of that idea or that genre <laughs> in itself. And uh, we haven't really explored seafaring either. Again, like we mm. come back to this world map and it's an easy way of thinking, you know, this, how do we explore this world? And uh, uh, it, it just felt natural, I think. Uh, so mm. it's, it's, uh, it's a great fit. Mm. Steam universe. Yeah, and you also mentioned humor as well. I mean, obviously, you know, we get to play Maybe maybe get to play a little bit early or a demo, and then the final thing. You've been working and living and breathing this game for years. How do you make sure that the humor is still something that kind of like the, the tongue-in-cheek jokes and stuff still hit after all that time? Are there ones that you get fed up of and then you kind of come around on again? <laughs> or uh, that's a good question. I don't know. You just have to have I don't know that kind of people around you mm -hmm. that kind of like these this humor. Uh, I think Gothenburg in itself, where, where we are uh, located, has uh, is kind of famous in Sweden for that s a certain sense of humor, and mm -hmm. I think some of that uh, comes through in our games as well. Well, before we were before we were actually on air, we were like talking about like the things that you do as like a studio together, like have fun outside of just the games, and like it sounds like it's in, like in the DNA of Thunderful. Like it's like when you're not working on a game, you're Doing fun and exactly. singing, uh, uh, what's your song again? Oh, uh, Piano Man. Uh, Piano <laughs> Man is nice. And yeah. you know my name. Yeah. 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 I, uh, but go, like right off of that, tell me about the hats. So, <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that, um, I think we, um, the first game came around the time we had uh, some of us uh, played a lot of. Uh, Team Fortress. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think the the inspiration, part of the inspiration, came from you know uh, the Valve games, uh, and it just fit very well with again with the gameplay of uh, getting these trick shots and trying to shoot mm -hmm. the hats out of the other characters, <laughs> and it's just a it's a lovely way of giving you that quirkiness and the exploration of finding and customizing your own crew and uh, doing all these crazy setups. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, we love it. Uh, that's one of the first things on the list when we when we make it. Like, can we can we get more hats into this? It's it's really that important for us. <laughs> yeah, like fun puzzles, hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I'm we not joking. To, we need to make a very we need to make a very uh, strategy based game where we're, you're going to be shooting other people and wearing funny hats. Yes. And we're going to be taking it very seriously. Oh yeah. But not that seriously because we're going to be. Uh, can you have a fez? Is there a fez? I think we have a fez. How yeah. many hats? How many hats? Can you tell me how many hats you have? Oh, I Personally. don't know on top of my head. Uh, <laughs> no, Someone get the news team on this. Uh, new article, how many hats are in Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll the get big to you. question. I'll, I'll come back to you on that. Okay, okay, all right, have a think. Well, uh, you mentioned the crew there as well, and kind of, I mean, I want to get into that because I, I, love, I love gaming systems and seeing how things all come together. Can you kind of give us a little overview about how everyone kind of synergizes with each other and how difficult that is as a developer to balance when you've got different abilities and then like being able to kind of spec in like I saw yeah yeah sure two ways. Uh, so that's kind of the second big portion of, of new things that we've added to this game compared to heist one and in mm -hmm. um, so in heist one uh, you meet all these different characters in the game 
and they have very unique abilities and unique characteristics for how they play. And we felt like we wanted even more strategic depth than that. So this time around, we made this job system, which is based on uh, the characters equipping different weapons. Giving the robots them... are taking our jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're taking jobs from uh, equipping different weapons. And uh, you can just change weapons and mm -hmm. get different jobs, but you still get to keep some of the abilities or some, some of the uh, experience that you've gained in uh, a different job when you're switching. So uh, we try to invite you to mix and match all of these abilities. Mm -hmm. And as you said, like that's difficult to kind of balance. But in a game like this, we feel like it's more important for you to feel empowered and uh, interested in finding these different secrets than for us to do, make sure that it is waterproof and ex mm -hmm. exactly uh, balanced. Uh, so there are definitely combinations in here that are more powerful than others, but that's kind of up to the gamers to uh, to find and uh, enjoy. Yeah, I was gonna say it must be like kind of yeah, take you in two different directions in a way because you are as as designers like you come up with this experience, but you also do want to you know let go of the hand a little bit and just yeah. Go. I mean, some like many games are to a certain extent toys, and you just want to find cool things and uh, and let people play around with them. Has there been any, uh, you know, unexpected combinations or something that's come up in playtesting or um, sounded like someone dropped a whole load of scaffolding <laughs> outside like there? Steam World, uh, Steam <laughs> World is going on outside right there. next to us. Um, but no, what's the most kind of unexpected combination that you've seen and you're like, oh, okay, I didn't expect that to work. Maybe that's the new, that's the new meta. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know, actually. Uh, nothing that comes right mm. in my head, yeah. I mean, but it's, you know, it's what is like this, is, this might be a few questions, but it's an adapting and like, you know, carrying on what Steam World heist. It's like, what was the main things like going into this one that you knew you had to like evolve like from the first game and like kind of like also like yeah. that sort of like creativity, like the creativity you see from the first game and how you bring them into the yeah, second. Yeah, I, I would say that would probably be the world map. Mm -hmm. Again, like it's definitely one of the first features that we like pitched to our, our team or ourselves. Uh, and uh, wanted to do and again like it fits very well into the theme and uh, the idea of the game in itself so that's that's definitely a starting point it's definitely been difficult though uh, it's been a lot of iteration just to get to where we are right now and finding the right balance of you know how difficult it's going to be how engaging you want it to be uh, because it's still um, it's still two different levels of game. Like yeah. strategic mode and a tactics mode, it's always difficult to kind of balance those two. Work. Yeah, and I feel like also with the, like with players from, of the first game, um, who will now be able to come back to it, like we're probably like bullet bouncing off the wall pros. Um, you know, where is the balance? Like, is there is it's like is there a difficulty setting? Is there yeah. is there a balance in which like you're you're trying to honor those who like already are familiar with? Yeah, that? exactly. And uh, that's one of the ways we try to again meet the approachability and, and getting people into this is and, and still keeping it challenges is by having multiple levels of difficulty where you can either just select one of a couple of presets or okay. uh, you can also customize it yourself with a bunch of different settings uh, where you can go pretty detailed into what kind of challenge you want. For example, you know, if you want to if you want the tactics levels uh, to be extremely challenging but you, you want to make the the other outworld combat or the uh, ship combat less difficult, you can do so or, or the other way around. Um, this is more of a general question about kind of game development, but you know, you kind of come into a new project, you have a load of ideas. How do you know, I guess, what's not working versus what really is working and, you know, if um, you decide to pull back on one idea or kind of, you know, go all in on another. What's the process? Is it just like endless play testing? Is it getting other people? Yeah, you just have to play it a lot mm. uh, and put it into hands of new people mm. and, and uh, see how they, uh, how they play. I think mm. it's very important for us as well to actively play the game as much mm. as possible. Uh, that is super important and I think that's been key for, for uh, like uh, any, any good designer uh, really plays the game a lot and give it, puts it into hand new people. Mm. Um, and, and how much, how do you, is that also a way in which you gauge the jokes, whether they're landing, <laughs> whether people are, people are laughing? Um, that's a good question also. Uh, I don't think we, uh, we vet those as much as we Everyone's should very serious. sometimes, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, no, they just end up in the game and uh, it's, they're just good. I feel, I mean, I think Thunderful has like a really good uh, like identity in that way where like they're these, they're very charming and very colorful experiences like on a personal, like personality, yep. and, like they're very naturally very funny. Um, and it's always like good to see, uh, it's just good to know that there's developers who are like, trying to do something mechanically interesting but still trying to entertain the audience beyond that and like have that sort of voice and personality um but of course like this i don't know is this this one seems very much like 
an adventure game like way like like I, that there's like what how are you blending in the adventure and the story and the narrative into like these beats and moments in the gameplay uh, so in specifically in Steamboat Heist 2 we um, uh, the way we did it is that we uh, like the main character uh, in of the game uh, uh, Captain Lee Wei, he's like he's mainly a narrative construct and he, like he's the one who's guiding the player throughout the game and the the story of the game he generally doesn't uh, join the crew when you're actually playing the game uh, so uh, that way I think you can also give the rest of the crew space and and uh, have them uh, you know uh, stand, have some of the jokes and and stand, have the humor for their their part and uh, he can take on some of the more serious uh, issues as well, mm -hmm. but uh, other than that, I think it's also like just giving the characters personality mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of um, room to to express that uh, both the gameplay or yeah, with hats <laughs> if they want to yeah, for sure. <laughs> with hats. Uh, so uh, that I think is is the way that we've done it at least. Well, it's been awesome talking. Uh, when can we? Expect it or see it. Yeah, so uh, Steam Heist 2, uh, it's uh, it's released on August 8th uh, on uh, like all major platforms. Uh, a day before my birthday. Oh, I was going to say right nice. in between our birthdays. Yeah, right in between our birthdays. <laughs> thank you for doing, thank you for putting it that date too. Yeah, it's like, you. especially the day before my birthday. So You've already got the ninth off as we well, haven't you? No, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you so much for being here, uh, Petra. It's really, it's been great. Mm -hmm. We cannot wait to play SteamWorld Heist. We'll for do karaoke you, after this. Okay, we're gonna go do karaoke, we're gonna go wear funny hats, and then we're gonna do trick shots. That's uh, great. <laughs> anyways, I've been Kurt. I've been Kurt, I am Kurt. That's Lucy James. Uh, you're watching GS Live. Stay tuned because we have many more guests, many more cool things.